Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do this really pretty like glam cowgirl style nail design using products from Kira Sky. I do want to go ahead and thank Kira Sky for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are interested to purchase any products from their website, I will have everything linked down below. You can also use my discount code KCNails to save a little bit of money on your purchase. One more thing before we get into today's tutorial, I do want to apologize for my voice. Allergies are hitting me full force right now. So yeah, please ignore my voice. I do already have the base of the nails done. I did these in dip powder. I did use Kira Sky's all-in-one cover acrylic called Rose Water. You want to go ahead and do the base of your nails with a nude acrylic powder. You can do them as acrylics or dip powder. Like I said, I did mine as dip powder. Honestly, I did like six or seven layers. I did so many layers for the length of these nails. I did also already apply Kira Sky's Velvet Matte Gel Top Coat over top of the dip powder nails. I personally love to do my nail art over a very smooth surface and this is just my preference. So let's go ahead and get into all of the products that you're going to be needing for this nail art tutorial. Very obviously, you are going to need a nail lamp. I am using Kira Sky's Purple LED Nail Lamp. This is my absolute favorite. I use it all the time. You are going to need a white gel liner or a white gel polish. I'm not sure why mine is so dirty. Please ignore that. You will need a gel liner for the accent color. I am using Kira Sky's Gel Art, the Minta Lisa. This is a really pretty like minty blue color. For the cow print, I am using the color Cold Brew. You will also need the Bling It On Rhinestone Gel. This is a really thick gel that helps hold the rhinestones in place. I will be using these tan colored rhinestones. These are really pretty. Kira Sky actually has a rhinestone color exactly like this. It is called Chikarage, one of my favorites, but they unfortunately do not have any shaped rhinestones. So I will be using this one. You will also need a top coat. I am using the non-wipe. You can also use the velvet matte top coat if you want this nail design to be matte. I'm also going to be using a pointy silicone tool to sculpt out the 3D flowers. This one also has a chisel side, which I will be using to pick up the gel. For the 3D flowers, I will be using this white 3D sculpting gel. I don't really work with acrylic, otherwise I would be using Kira Sky's all-in-one acrylic powder to sculpt out the flowers. Now that you guys see everything you'll need for this nail art, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. So taking the white canvas gel art liner, I'm going to go ahead and do some abstract lines on the pinky. Taking the same gel liner, I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the tip and the bottom portion of the nail. You can do this however you like. Of course, it is kind of abstract. I am following a reference photo. So here is the inspiration for today's nail design. I really loved these nails. It kind of reminds me of my childhood for some reason. I did end up deciding to switch out the black cow print for a brown cow print, but you can do it black as well. I will have the creator's Instagram linked down below in the description. I'm not going to be curing the nails individually, I'm just going to go color by color. So I am moving on to the ring fingernail, which is a V-tip. I just like to start at the free edge to make sure the V-tip is going to be straight and centered. Then going off to the sides, I'm going to draw a straight line from the corner down to the center of the free edge. Once I have the V-tip, I am going to go ahead and fill it in. The longer brush on Kira Sky's gel liners make it really easy to do very long lines that are pretty straight. These gel liner polishes are also very pigmented, which means you're not going to be needing to do more than one layer, which to me is a very important, especially for doing nail art. You do not want to have to be going over French tips more than one time. Do make sure to turn your hand around and get a different perspective to see if there's any mistakes that you can fix within your nail art. That is the ring fingernail, so let's go ahead and move on to the index nail. This is going to be another V-tip, except this is a little bit more abstract, so we're only going to be doing half of the V-tip with the white polish. So that is the index nail. For the thumbnail, we're basically going to be doing the same design that we did for the pinky. In the beginning of the video, I know I called this like cowgirl nails. I'm not exactly sure if that's like the right name. I kind of struggled to figure out what to call this type of nail design. 
It's kind of like a glam cowgirl western type of vibe. So yeah, if the title is different than what I said in the intro, I apologize. I'm just trying to figure out what best describes this nail design. By the way, the edges of all of the white nail art doesn't actually have to be extremely perfect because we are going to be outlining everything with a different color. So now that I have all of the white gel liner art done, I'm going to go ahead and cure for a full minute. The next thing I'm going to do is the cow prints. I actually need a no art palette, so I'm going to be taking this tile and I'm going to place the color cold brew on top of this and go ahead and start with the dotting tool. So I'm going to place the color cold brew on top of the no art palette and go ahead and take a dotting tool and start doing the cow print. Cow print is probably one of the easiest no art designs that you can do as a no artist. It is extremely beginner friendly. It is just a bunch of little blobs. You kind of want to like shake the dotting tool around when you're doing the little blob. You don't have to do this perfectly. I will go ahead and say if you do smaller blobs, it's going to look a little bit more like a Dalmatian. So do try to keep your blobs pretty big if you do want it to look more like a cow print. You do want to do this very randomly. You do not want to have any patterns within your cow print, otherwise it's not going to look very realistic. If you guys are still nervous to try cow print, go ahead and look up a reference photo of cow print and just kind of try and replicate it as best as you can. Cow print is one of those nail designs that's a little bit hard to mess up, so just go ahead and have fun with it and it will turn out great. So that is basically all you have to do for the cow print design. I am doing this on all of the white areas for the nail design. Just like I said with the edges of the white nail art, if you get any brown on the edges, it is fine. We are going to be outlining over top of this. Just try to keep it as clean as possible. Once we have all of the cow print done, I am going to go ahead and cure for another full minute. The next thing you want to do after curing the cow print is take your accent color gel liner and we're going to go ahead and start outlining all of the white gel art areas. So making sure I don't have too much polish on the brush, we're going to go ahead and outline the abstract lines. One of the biggest tips that I have for this type of nail art is making sure you don't have too much polish on the brush. This is going to give you a very clean and thin, precise line. One really cool thing about this nail design is you can switch out only the accent color for a completely different nail look. You can use pink, purple, orange, yellow. It is completely up to you. Like I did say, I switched out the cow print for a brown color instead of black. You can switch out these colors for a bunch of different nail looks. For the index nail, we're actually not going to be outlining it. We are going to be doing the other half of the v-tip. The thing about this nail art is we're not going to be filling in the corner. So this is going to be an outlined v-tip which is a little bit more advanced. If you don't quite have the confidence for a outlined v-tip, you can just fill it in. The reason an outlined v-tip is a little bit harder is because you can't quite perfect the initial line as much as you can if you were filling in the entire thing because you do want to keep it quite thin and very even across the entire nail design. Once I have the accent color done, I am going to go ahead and cure for a full 60 seconds. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and apply the rhinestones at the cuticle area of the ring fingernail. We're also going to be top coating at the same time. To do this, I am taking Kira's Guide's Bling It On Rhinestone Gel. Again, this is a very thick gel that holds the rhinestones in place. Definitely do not skip using this if you want your rhinestones to last. I already have the rhinestones out and I basically arranged them how I'm going to be putting them on the nail. This is really helpful to get a good idea of what it's going to look like when you do it on your nail. 
So I'm just taking the Bling It On Rhinestone Gel and I'm placing a good amount of this at the cuticle area, about the same size as the rhinestone placement. The next thing I'm going to do is actually take the top coat and apply this over the entire nail. I'll be honest, I'm not exactly sure if this is a really good thing to do, placing the top coat over top of your Bling It gel. On the gel bottle, it actually says to place your rhinestones, cure, and then top coat around it. I personally don't like top coating around rhinestones because I feel like it kind of floods them a little bit. So this is kind of my first time attempting to do it this way. To place the rhinestones, I am using Kira Sky's Rhinestone Applicator. This makes it so easy to apply your rhinestones to your nails. Definitely recommend it if you don't have one of these. I'm just picking up the rhinestones and placing it down on the nail to match the other hand. The opposite end of the rhinestone applicator is actually to move the rhinestones around. This is really helpful because this side does not stick to the rhinestones. After I've placed all of the rhinestones down, I am going to go ahead and cure for a full minute. The next thing I'm doing is going ahead and taking the non-wide gel top coat and top coating the pinky, index, and thumbnail. This is one of my favorite gel top coats like ever. It has a really good consistency. Of course, it is non-wipe, so you don't have the tacky layer after it's cured. I really love the finish that it gives the nails. Overall, it's just one of my favorite gel top coats. One of the biggest tips that I have whenever you do nail art is when you're applying your gel top coat, you want to turn your hand upside down for a few seconds before you cure. This is going to level out the gel and make the surface of the nail as smooth as possible. I'm then going to go ahead and cure for a full minute. So before I do the 3D flower, I am also going to top coat the middle fingernail just because I do want the background of the flower to be shiny as well. Of course, I am going to go ahead and cure that. Moving on to the 3D flower, like I said, you can do this with Kira Sky's acrylic. I just can't really do acrylic that much because the monomer odor is quite strong. So I'm using a 3D sculpting gel. I'm just going to take a silicone tool and pick up a small amount of the white gel. Using some gloves, I'm going to roll this up in a ball and place it down on the nail. Taking my dry silicone tool, I'm going to go ahead and start sculpting out the flower. These are some of my favorite 3D flower designs to do. They're so easy to do and they look really pretty. The top and the bottom petal are pointy and they do kind of round out at the bottom. Do make sure whenever you're sculpting 3D flowers to make sure that you do the little line in the middle. Depending how low or high you make the line in the middle is going to determine how the flower is going to look when you're finished. If you do the line very deep, it's going to look a little bit more 3D, versus if you barely do the line, it's going to look a little bit more flat. Because this type of gel holds its shape extremely well, I'm not going to cure this. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the other flower petals as well. I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same flower petal flipped on the bottom portion of the nail. I know a lot of people do their rhinestone placement first and then the flower petals around it, but I personally find that a little bit tricky because I don't want to get any of the flower petals on the rhinestones. So this is just how I do it. I am trying my best to make sure I have enough room for the rhinestones in the center. Once I have the bottom flower petal done, we're going to move on to the three smaller round ones. For these, I am taking about half the amount of gel. Again, I am still rolling them into balls, and I'm going to go ahead and place three of these side by side to make sure I space them out correctly. I'm just going to be smashing a line down the center of these little balls, sculpting out the sides a little bit, doing any touch-ups that I need to do. So basically, that is the flower petals finished. I am going to go ahead and cure them for a full minute. Because this gel does cure with a shiny layer, I don't want the flower petal to be shiny. I don't really like how that looks personally. So I am taking Kira Sky's Velvet Matte Gel Top Coat and I'm applying a extremely thin layer of this to all of the flower petals. Whenever you top coat over top of 3D flowers, you want to make sure that it's extremely thin. Otherwise, you are taking away from the 3D aspect of your petals. I am going to go ahead and cure the matte gel top coat. Next, I am going back with Kira Sky's Bling It On Rhinestone Gel, and I'm going to place a decent amount of this product in the center of all of the flower petals. Going in with these circular rhinestones, I'm placing a big one in the center, and I'm going to surround that rhinestone with smaller ones. 
This is always the moment of truth, is seeing if you made enough space for all of the rhinestones to properly fit in the center. Once I've placed all of the center rhinestones, I am going to go ahead and cure. And the last step is to take Kira Sky's cuticle oil. I am going to be using the lavender scent, and I'm going to place this on all of my cuticles. This cuticle oil smells amazing and is very hydrating for your skin. And here are the nails. Let me know what you guys think of this nail design down below in the comments. I love how these turned out so much. Even though I'm not a big cowgirl type of person, I think these are absolutely adorable. I also really love the fact that I have matching nails now. That doesn't happen too often, so I feel like a new person whenever I have matching nails. I do want to go ahead and thank Hero Sky again for sponsoring today's video. Do make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!